The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, I live because of the Father. So whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Wisdom, draw near and feed us with your life giving bread. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. So I'm talking to all of you, but I'm really talking to these two young ladies over here. <laughs> Do you use emojis? Okay, what are they? There was 
There are ways to express emotion. Anything else you want to add? Sorry, say that again. You would agree with her. Come on, since you're a yellow home, so. Do you use emojis? No, I don't. No. <laughs> Never mind that. Sorry. <laughs> okay, do any of you use emojis? Do you know what I'm talking about? Oh, God. Okay, she said they express emotion. Any other responses, thoughts on that? There's illustrations to go along with the message. Illustrations to, to go along with the message. So there's written word, but then there's also this face, right? Objects too, that's right. You can put all kinds of objects on if you wanted to. Yeah. Um, I have an emoji. It's a specific kind, and you can dress it up. So, so I decided I didn't like the Nats uniform that I had on, so I changed it to something else. <laughs> but yes, emojis, you tack them on at the end of a sentence or in the middle of a sentence, or if you write a certain word, that'll come up with this picture of what that word is and you can use that instead. But yes, as far as a facial expression, it tells you what the emotion of that person is. So the, where I'm going with this is that both Jesus and Holy Wisdom have an emoji. Okay, Jesus's emoji is that of red. But it's living red. So it's not like a loaf of bread that has little feet on it and a smile. It's a loaf of bread that is alive. So it is and it's not a loaf of bread. I am simply contradicting myself and yet it is and it's not. This is Jesus. He says, I am the living bread. This is John's gospel who will use six times Jesus' phrase, I am. We've already talked about this in past weeks, where he will say, I am, hearkening back to Moses asking God, when I go to the Israelites to tell them that you have sent me, who shall I say sent me? And God says, tell them, I am, has sent you. Well, we're, well, okay, that's good, but that doesn't help much. But still, Jesus uses the phrase, I am to get the people to understand that this is a God that has gone with them from the beginning of their time in Egypt all the way to now, with Jesus as the living bread. He is God's love gift of his entire self, which is not just the physical, but it's the spiritual, the emotional, the very presence of God enfleshed. The Gospel of John was written either late first or early second century to combat a couple different ideas that were floating around about Jesus. One of them is what we call Gnostic, and that is Jesus was really just a spirit. He never really had any flesh. He just appeared to and the other one is docetic, which is also appearing to, but he didn't really die on the cross, he just swooned. And when they put him in the grave, he came back to life. And my question is, have you ever hung on a cross for six plus hours and swooned? I think not. So this is the Gospel of John writing to these people who have come up with these ideas about the fact that Jesus isn't real. And that's one of the reasons that we have this phrase, I am the living bread. I am alive, I am real, I am standing in front of you. I am who I say I am. Wisdom, wisdom's emoji is a house, but a house with an entranceway that is inviting. It's like you could walk into this house and you see the doorway and it's all decorated with these beautiful flowers and a wreath and you look inside the house and it's so inviting and you just want to walk in. This is wisdom. Come into my house, you who are simple, and I will teach you. 
Wisdom is a teacher, but wisdom also, as we will hear in Proverbs, was a co-creator with God. It says, I was constantly by God's side as playmate, as someone who created with God the cosmos. So that's the other emoji of wisdom, is this face that is the universe. Because she says, I created all of this. I was by God's side, and I was God's creator. Later on, in the Apostle Paul's writing, he will call Jesus the wisdom of God. So there's a whole lot of things going on here with holy wisdom, that she is a co-creator, but then she will also be named as Jesus, as God's wisdom. So there's a lot of emotions and emojis that are going on with Holy Wisdom, but she calls us into a love affair with her. So her emoji and Jesus's emoji is not just a face, but it's also a heart. This heart that is wide open with love and invitation and extension that says, come, come and experience this kind of love that is from the very foundations of the world in which wisdom is a co-creator and in which Jesus will be named as God's wisdom. She calls us into a love affair with her wisdom to set the direction of our lives. The Eucharist has an emoji and that is of bread and wine an invitation for us to receive, but drawing us into that deepening relationship with Jesus. We celebrate this, Eucharist, Eucharisto, Greek, I give thanks, as the great Thanksgiving, because we are invited into, as it were, that Thanksgiving feast that feast of bread and wine that not only is for us to eat, but for us to intake into ourselves and become more and more like Jesus. I am the living bread. Do we take that bread into us, not as a symbol, as some believe, not as a piece of bread that then becomes actual flesh, but as a piece of bread that then becomes Jesus in us. Jesus who becomes alive in us over and over and over again. The wisdom of God, wisdom's house, Jesus who comes into us. Into us to abide with us and to feed us. So my question for all of us this morning is, do we follow wisdom, or as we will find in the book of Proverbs, her counterpart, which is Lady Folly. Lady Folly calls and says, come on into my house, honey. And you can tell what she's thinking. You know, come, I will happily lead you astray. Come, I will happily take you to places that you could never imagine but you will be really sorry. <laughs> come on. And Lady Wisdom throws open her doors and says, come, you who are simple, come, eat, drink of my fare, come and gain wisdom. There's a huge difference between Lady Wisdom and Lady Folly. Who do we follow? I would imagine that we would follow Lady Wisdom, or I would think you probably would be here this morning. And do we enter her house on a regular basis? When we get up in the morning or sometime during the day, do we offer a prayer, God, let your wisdom come into me. Holy Wisdom, I need you. There are moments in my life and in all of our lives that we are down on our knees and we say, help me. And there is Lady Wisdom for us. God's wisdom that comes into our lives in Jesus, but in the Eucharist. 
Let us live into that wisdom, which is God's gift to us. We all have decisions to make in our lifetimes, sometimes on an hourly or minute by minute basis, sometimes it's once in a while, but we all have decisions to make and who do we follow? Do we follow Lady Wisdom or do we follow Lady Folly? My prayer is that we will always follow Lady Wisdom and that in following Wisdom, she will lead us to Jesus again and again and again. Amen. 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 stand and affirm my faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten the Father, God of God, light and light. He God, he God, he God, not made, of one being of the Father, through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he came in from the Virgin Mary, and by the way, amen. For our sake, he was crucified and the Son of God. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in the one holy Catholic Francis Church. We acknowledge on righteousness and we look for the resurrection of the dead and the of the world to come. Amen. <laughs> Lord, for all the 
God sends into this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all those who have died, Michelle Morris and Robert Ward, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. We put their trust in you. our sins to God. God of all our mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your good in our lives. We have denied the goodness of each other and ourselves and the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done in our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all of your sin through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Please be seated. If I may, I want to say a word about the Lord's Prayer that we're going to be using this morning. It is from the New Zealand Prayer Book. You see in your bulletin that the 930 said the traditional. Um, but we're going to say the one that, again, is from the New Zealand Prayer Book. Um, we had it once before, and unfortunately the whole thing wasn't printed, but here it is today. And I ask that you simply enter into the spirit of how this prayer was written because it is beautiful and it is a way for us to express our thanks and our love of God in words that are just a bit different. Thank you. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is right to give him thanks and praise. The spirit of life is upon us. He gives life to all creatures. The spirit is moving on the face of the earth. And we feel the spirit in our hearts. The spirit is renewing us. And all creatures on the earth. Holy God, your spirit fashioned us from the beginning, created us from the dust of the ground, and breathed upon us, and all creation too was enlivened by your spirits, your spirit free and abroad in all creation, making life by your work of love. Nothing living is untouched by your spirit or without your gift of grace. The earth is full of your treasures, great and small are the works of your hands. You set us in the midst of life to care and serve, to walk humbly with you and trust in your spirit, but we have betrayed that trust and have served ourselves, worshiping our own image and frustrating your spirit within us. Only your Son, filled with the Spirit, has set us free and liberated us to walk again in the newness of life. Yet the Spirit of your Son still cries in our hearts so that all creation may be free again with your love. God has this sacrament of preparation given for us and all creation as a sign of your coming kingdom. At the Last Supper, before his final act of sacrifice, your son took bread and said, This is my body. He took the cup and said, This is my blood. Through that same creative spirit, we pray that these creatures of bread and wine may be to us the very life of your Son in flesh and blood signs of life renewed for the whole creation. As, As we eat and drink these holy things, we pray for grace that we may become imagined the symbols of your faithfulness for which all creatures long. Amen. We now pray in these words, Eternal Spirit, Earth maker, pain maker, life maker, source of all that is and all that shall be, Father and mother of us all, love me God and to miss heaven, the hallowing of your name and echo through the universe, the way of your justice be followed by the peoples on the earth, your gracious will be done by all created people, your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our world and our hearts. With the bread that we need for today, feed us. In the curse we absorb from one another, forgive us. In time of temptation, test us, strengthen us. From trials too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For your reign and the power that is love and I am forever.
Good morning. Good morning. Wow. <laughs> First service, had to do it twice. <laughs> welcome to all of you who are here in person, and welcome to all who are joining us online. Uh, we are so glad you are here and uh, thrilled to celebrate the Lord's Supper together. We'll start with our senior warden who has a few words. So this past week, the regathering committee uh, met, I'm not sure if I'm on camera there or not, <laughs> um, to discuss the uh, rise in numbers with the new Delta variant that's uh, been going through our community. Uh, it's been decided that beginning next week, we're going to uh, meet outside on Saturdays at 6 o'clock, and we will have Zoom services on Sundays at 9.30. Uh, we'll continue to watch this. Uh, watch the numbers. Uh, the uh, regathering will meet bi-weekly, at least maybe more, depending on uh, how often it's necessary. But uh, we'll be watching it closely, and uh, we'll make adjustments as necessary. I know this is disappointing. We're disappointed, but we felt that it was something we needed to do to protect our community, and to uh, that's how we show God's love to each other is to protect each other. So that's what we're. Uh, Unfortunately, we're we doing. Another thing I want to talk about is uh, sacred ground. Uh, we'll have another session of sacred ground beginning on September 22nd. Thanks, Mike. Uh, Mike and I will be the facilitators for the next session. Uh, sacred ground is a race-based dialogue. Um, it's a 10-week program. Uh, we do we do it every other week. Um, so. Um, there's films to watch, uh, reading, you read uh, different readings and things like that. And um, so you learn about the experiences of different races in, in, the, in our country. I think um, we looked at, uh, we learned about the African American experience, the Native American experience, um, Hispanic experience. Help me out here, Mike. Um, Asian Americans. Asian Americans. Um, and it's, it's very eye-opening. I mean, it, I, I learned so many things that I, you know, I didn't know, and it's it's learning about the experiences of others, and it gives you a better understanding of others. And um, again, it's a it's the way we um, live out God's love is learning about each other and having a better understanding of each other. And the last thing I want to talk about was uh, friends of Piney. Um, as you know, we're collecting for Friends of Piney this year. The money will go towards helping our, uh, the homeless in our community. And I just wanted to give you an update of where we are. So far, we've raised $850. It's a pretty good start. We're going to keep collecting until the end of August. So um, that's great. Thank you. Thank you, Sewell. 
So as Sewell said, beginning next Sunday, our, our worship services will be at 6 o'clock p.m. on Saturday evening outdoors, uh, like we did earlier this year and, and beginning last fall. So to bring a chair, wear your shorts and your t-shirts and your comfy um, clothes, and, um, and we'll enjoy each other's company and worship the Lord together. If you cannot be with us on Saturday afternoon or Saturday evening, uh, Zoom services will resume next Sunday at 9.30 a.m. So if you don't come on Saturday night, you can still join in worship on for the Liturgy of the Word on Sunday mornings via Zoom, and then we'll have a, a little Zoom coffee hour afterwards where we can all kind of catch up with each other. So, so that's our new normal for the time being, and uh, we'll continue to watch it and monitor it and, and alter our behavior appropriately. That sounded good, didn't it? <laughs> alter behavior appropriately. <laughs> Behavior and me, we never got along well with that, that word together, but anyway. Um, two weeks from yesterday, so August 28th, on our outdoor service, we'll be doing a blessing of the backpacks. So that applies to all going back to school for whatever reason, whether it's uh, to, to get your initial education or to get continuing education. I was sharing with Reverend Linda this morning that fall is my time for continuing education. So I'm not sure how that's going to work out, participating in the liturgy and having my own backpack, but we'll figure it out. <laughs> There'll be a little thing for your backpack, and, and here's the best part. Popsicles after the service <laughs> for everybody. <laughs> so that's um, August 28th, uh, two weeks from yesterday. Let's see, what else, what else, what else? Next Saturday's outdoor service, bring your prayer book with you. Does that still apply? Okay, bring your prayer book with you next Saturday for the outdoor service. Um, there was something else in my head, but I don't know what it was. I did forget one thing, Steve. The Vestry's meeting, meeting this Tuesday, and my apologies to the Vestry, uh, I meant to send out the agenda yesterday, but you'll get the agenda today of uh, Westridge meeting on Tuesday. Any other announcements that I may have forgotten or things that you might want to share with the rest of us this morning? So I think there may be some of you who are saying to yourselves, why do we have different liturgy every single Sunday? What is the matter with this crazy lady that we have something different? Why can't we do the same thing all the time? Well, in the famous words of my mother, I have a method to my madness. And that is that General Convention is meeting next July in, in Baltimore. And one of the big things that's going to be happening is the beginning of putting together a new prayer book. For those, who is right? <laughs> For those of you who went through the 28 to the 79, you know about the green book, you know about the zebra book, you know about all the different colors that led up from the 28 to the 79. I don't know how it's going to look this year, but I know having been on the liturgical um, conversation about what's going to happen at General Convention that there is going to be some major work up for the prayer book. I don't know when. I would hope probably within the next five years. Yes, that sounds like a long time off, but actually it will be here in the blink of an eye. So that has been one of my reasons for doing these different liturgies during this summer. Plus, I happen to like doing thing, different things, but also to say to you as a congregation of St. Paul's that these are some of the things that's going to happen in the next however many years. We have different words of speaking about God. We don't have to say the same thing all the time. We don't talk to each other the same way all the time. So my sense is we should also speak to God in different ways. So I simply have been trying to address the fact 
that the liturgy in the Episcopal Church is going to change and to help us to understand that there are so many ways of celebrating the Eucharist, of celebrating being together, of celebrating doing the readings, of simply honoring and worshiping God. Thank you. So before we, I ask the anniversary birthday question, uh, hand chimes and choir practice will not take place until such time that we can safely gather indoors again. So, so if you are part of those groups or want to be part of those groups, you have a little vacation. All right. Any birthdays or anniversaries to celebrate this week? Is it anniversary? Not a simultaneous birthday. All right. It, it never hurts to ask, Steve. I already had my you have an anniversary, too? No. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> All right, Jerry's birthday. I'm out of town. And, and Kathy and Jean's anniversary. When's your anniversary? The 23rd? Jean, how many years? Nine years. Yeah. How many? Fifteen. Fifty-eight. Oh. Fifty-eight years. Congratulations. Well, let's start by praying for Jean and Kathy and their anniversary with the prayer found on page fourteen in your bulletin. O oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send therefore your blessing upon these your servants, that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Happy anniversary and many, many more. And now, Jerry, your birthday. When is it? I, it was last week, August 6th. I was out of town on vacation. I celebrated 58 years of living. <laughs> 58 years. Uh, what's today, the 15th? August August 6th? Yeah. I'm sorry, too much time has passed. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, that means that he was born the same year that they got married. <laughs> That's right. Wow. That's why I said that. You know, interesting fact, we're going to pray for you in a second. <laughs> interesting fact, Margaret and Dick Lehman were married the day I was born. We found that out together one day, one day at coffee hour. Did uh, they know that when they got married? Yeah. <laughs> oh, <I'm not> <laughs> All right, let's pray for Jerry. Since we've given him, since I've given him enough grief, let's pray for Jerry. <laughs> oh God, our hands are in your hand. Look with favor and pray on your servant Jerry as he begins another year. Grant that he may grow in wisdom and grace. Strengthen his trust in your goodness all the days of his life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday, Jerry. Was there cake? See, it happened too long ago, he doesn't remember. It was a dessert at the restaurant. We ate out, so it was a brownie, or pie, whatever it was called. There was a sweet treat. Let's put that one. Okay, all right, awesome. Let us stand for our closing hymn. <laughs>
have the sparrow, the lizard, and the lion, so that we all may treasure each creature alive with the spirit and touched by the hand of the Creator. May the blessing of our wonderful God, source of all being, 